Hello and welcome to this course on critical learnings on forest and adivasi rights. Previously in this course, we have learnt about substantive equality under Article 14 of the Constitution and its link to the recognition of historical injustices against the forest dwellers. In the previous lecture, you were introduced to the Forest Rights Act, its conceptual premise, and its history. In this lecture, we will take a deep dive into the key substantive and procedural provisions of the FRA. Part A looks at sections 3 and 4 of the Act. Part B of this lecture will look at the rights recognition process under section 6 of the Act. The connection between the FRA and the substantive right to life and livelihood as well as the procedural rights emerging from Article 21 of the Constitution will become apparent in this process. The core substantive provision of the FRA is Section 4.1, which states, quote, Notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force and subject to the provisions of this Act, the central government hereby recognizes and vests forest rights, unquote, in the forest-dwelling scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, quote, in respect of all forest rights mentioned in Section 3 of the Act, unquote. Section 4.1 thus contains a non obstante clause, that is, the FRA will prevail over any other law, such as the Indian Forest Act, with regard to recognition and vesting of rights in the forest areas of the country. Secondly, the language of the FRA, particularly Section 4, makes it clear that the law is not creating these rights or bestowing them in a top-down manner to forest dwellers. Rather, Section 4 vests pre-existing forest rights in the forest dwellers who belong to two categories, the scheduled tribes and the other traditional forest dwellers. This vesting of rights came into force on 31st July 2007. Before we take a closer look at the provisions of the law, we need to understand some important definitions provided under the FRA. At the core of the FRA is the Gram Sabha, as defined under the PESA. This is the Gram Sabha at the smallest possible habitation or hamlet or village level, such as Pada, Tola, etc. This is important because under ordinary Panchayat law, the village is defined on the basis of administrative convenience often combining 5 to 10 villages in one panchayat. Therefore, the FRA also carries space for traditional villages which may not coincide with revenue villages. A village is defined by the FRA as 1. A village according to Section 4B of the PESA or 2. Any area that is referred to as a village in the relevant state level Panchayati Raj laws, or 3. In states not governed through the Panchayats, such as the six scheduled states, the village constitutes the locally understood traditional village, or 4. Forest villages and old settlements, including unsurveyed villages that may or may not be notified officially as a village, such as in several parts of Chhattisgarh and other states. The Gram Sabha is the same as defined in the PESA, that is, a village assembly consisting of all adult members of the village, with the full and unrestricted participation of women. This definition is important because in many states' Panchayati Raj laws, the Gram Sabha comprises only those adults who are on the electoral rolls. In some states, only one member per household 
is a member of the Gram Sabha. Also, the Gram Sabha under the Panchayati Raj laws encompasses a number of villages and therefore diverse communities. Such a Gram Sabha will find it very difficult to fulfill its duties and powers under the FRA. We have just learned the definitions of village and Gram Sabha under the Forest Rights Act. Now, let us turn to the definitions of the eligible categories. Forest dwelling scheduled tribes refers to members of the scheduled tribes who are forest dwellers and also includes the ST pastoralist and nomadic groups. The scheduled tribes are defined under Article 342 of the Constitution and the 1950 Presidential Order for specific geographical areas. Other traditional forest dwellers or OTFD refers to non-scheduled tribes who have been forest dwellers for at least three generations prior to 13 December 2005. This would include people who may be notified as scheduled tribes in another region but have relocated to a forest area where they do not have scheduled tribe status. Although the term forest dweller is not explicitly defined, it can be culled out from these two communities' definitions in the Act. A forest dweller, whether belonging to the scheduled tribes or any other traditional community, is one who primarily resides in the forest and depends on the forests or forest lands for bona fide livelihood needs. What does this mean? These criteria were clarified in a circular issued by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs on 9th June 2008. The circular records that the Ministry had received queries from certain states regarding, quote, the implications of the phrase primarily reside in and who depend on forests or forest lands for bona fide livelihood needs, appearing in Section 2C and 2O of the Act, as to whether this would cover the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers who are not necessarily living inside the forest, but are depending on the forests or forest lands for their bona fide livelihood needs. The Mota Circular states that the eligible categories under the FRA include the scheduled tribes and OTFTs who have habitation or patches of cultivated land for meeting livelihood needs in forest areas. They would therefore be those who primarily spend most of their time in temporary makeshift structures or on such land. The fact that their dwelling houses may be outside the forest or forest land will have no bearing on their eligibility to claim forest rights. Thus, scheduled tribes and OTFTs who are dependent on the forest for their bona fide livelihood needs but not necessarily residing inside the forest will be covered under the FRA definition. OTFTs, in addition, have to establish that they have been forest dwellers for at least three generations, which the law describes as 75 years prior to 13 December 2005. The Ministry of Tribal Affairs has also clarified in its FAQs on the FRA that it is not necessary that the claimants and their ancestors have lived in the same village for 75 years. The requirement is that they should have been forest dwellers for three generations or 75 years. It is the particular OTFT village which has to establish this fact and it is not necessary that every individual claimant prove it. Once the eligibility bar is crossed, then the scheduled tribes and the non-scheduled forest dwellers are treated equally by the law and its mechanism for rights recognition. Now let us turn to Section 3 to understand the kinds of forest rights that are recognized by the law. 
section 3 lists together for the first time all the different kinds of forest rights which were scattered across various laws, rules, court orders, circulars, etc. in one place. An exhaustive list of 13 rights is listed in section 3.1 and summarized here on your screen. These forest rights can be broadly divided into individual forest rights, community forest rights, and community forest resource rights. However, under the mechanism provided by the FRA, any and all of the rights under Section 3.1 can be claimed by the scheduled tribes and OTFTs as individual rights or community rights or as both kinds of rights overlapping on the same land and forest resources. Now let's look at Section 3.2, which makes provisions for the forest right to development. Section 3.2 vests an additional forest right in the Gram Sabha to certain basic infrastructure, such as schools, hospitals, water bodies, etc. There are certain preconditions for this. One, the forest land diverted for such infrastructure should be less than one hectare with no more than 75 trees on the land. 2. The project proponent must be the government. And 3. The Gram Sabha's recommendation is essential to start the process of building such infrastructure. A detailed circular dated 18 May 2009 by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs describes the procedure for this. After the Gram Sabha's recommendation, the application for the relevant rural development scheme goes to the forest department that then sanctions the diversion of the land. You will find this motor circular in the supplementary material for this lecture. Land diverted for development schemes under Section 3.2 of the FRA is exempted from the payment of compensatory afforestation charges and net present value under the FCA. After the forest department's clearance, the development infrastructures to be built on the forest land will come under the use and management of the Gram Sabha. We now come to section 4 for the key characteristics of the forest right under the FRA. In this section, we will learn that the philosophy of access and control over land under FRA is very different from other land, forest or property laws. Clause 3 of Section 4 lays down that the law shall be applicable only to those scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers who have or had occupied forest land before 13 December 2005. This date is the cutoff date to be eligible for recognition of rights under the FRA. Clause 6 of Section 4 states that individual rights such as seasonal shelter, housing or other habitation on forest land granted by Section 3.1a shall be limited to a maximum area of 4 hectares per claim. Clause 4 of Section 4 lays down that all forest rights are heritable but not alienable or transferable meaning that they can be passed down to the next generation in the family or in the absence of a direct heir to the next of kin. But these rights cannot be leased, sold or transferred to anyone or gifted away. In this sense, a forest right is different from a private property right as commonly understood. The law also addresses the long unfulfilled societal need of women's ownership over land. As Clause 4 also states that all titles, when conferred on a household, are registered jointly in the name of both the spouses. Also, if it is a single woman led household, then the rights will be recorded in her name. Clause 5 of Section 4 of the FRA recognizes the right of the forest dwellers to not be dispossessed. 
This clause provides a statutory stay against eviction and dispossession while the rights recognition process is underway. Additionally, it provides protection against the curtailment of their existing forest rights through any other processes under any other laws until the recognition process is final. The courts have also been quick to protect forest dwelling communities from eviction when the FRA process is incomplete. The court's hesitation to direct eviction of forest dwellers is evident in the many interim orders passed by various high courts directing the government to maintain the status quo with regard to their eviction. Subclauses 2 and 7 of Section 4 address two conservation laws which have historically led to the curtailment of rights of the scheduled tribes and the OTFT. Before the enactment of the FRA, even the limited efforts by state governments to regularize forest rights were stalled because of the requirement under the Forest Conservation Act to pay for compensatory afforestation and the net present value for their land and thus obtain forest clearance. Section 47 of the FRA removes the requirement for any such payment. The forest right is conferred, quote, free of all encumbrances and procedural requirements, unquote, other than those in the FRA itself. In this lecture, we have learned about some key components of the Forest Rights Act, including the kind of forest rights recognized by the law and the powers it vests in the right holders. We also learned how these rights and powers are linked to the substantive rights of forest-dwelling individuals and communities under the Constitution. Forest rights are a way of enforcing the constitutional guarantees made to the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers under Articles 14, 15, 4 and 21 and other fundamental rights. In part B of this lecture, we shall look at the procedural aspects of the rights recognition process under the FRA. Thank you for watching.